All right, save the boat, and Caleb's gonna be in big trouble, or save Caleb, or the and the boat's gonna sink. <laughs> What's up, agents? Zero here. Welcome to 57 Degrees North. Now, I found this quite a while ago, maybe a month or two ago, on the App Store, and I technically really only played through it once, and it's actually fairly interesting. This is more of like a choose your own adventure style story game, if that makes any sense, if that's the kind of thing that you're actually interested in. But this is definitely. A really cool experience. It's actually $2.99 on both Android and iOS, and it's a large download, so do keep this in mind. But if you are able to get it, then I actually recommend doing so. And I do have a couple things more that I want to go ahead and mention before I get started. However, if you just want to jump straight to me going ahead and playing it, I'll make sure I have a timestamp on screen. So, the two things that I want to go ahead and mention before we get started is that. First off, it's actually compatible with this thing right here. This is called a Merge Cube, and I bought this like maybe a year or two ago. It is not required to go ahead and use it, but you can actually use this to make the decisions that you want. You should be seeing on screen by now what this actually would look like in Merge Cube mode. And if you happen to have a phone VR headset that gives camera access, then you can use that as well. This is what my VR headset actually looks like. And so, yeah, it's actually pretty cool, all things considered. But we're going to be focusing on the standard mode of this little story. And also, I'm not going to be playing through this entire thing unless you guys actually want me to do further videos on it. So make sure to let me know that down in the comment section. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started straight away, and I do have a save game in progress, but I'm just going to start a new game, particularly because I'm actually not very far in it, so it's not like you guys are going to be, like, missing anything, or I'm going to be missing anything, technically. But I just need to, um, let me go ahead and get my, um, this stuff. Uh, you guys probably remember me having this a few times. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with Chapter 1. And there is going to be subtitles on screen from the actual game itself. Just keep that in mind. And also, it does recommend having headphones, but I don't have that luxury for recording. So take it how you will. But it actually has some really nice audio. So that's actually kind of cool. So let's go ahead and get started. Rock! Sasha yelled from the front of the small boat. From the tiller, Caleb squinted against the stinging rain as he tried to decipher the abstract shapes floating past them in the darkness. A sudden flash of lightning revealed a huge stone column jutting out of the rough sea directly ahead. Alright, so this is actually the main mechanic of this particular game, where we have to basically, we're given the situation of the current story. And... We have to make our decision. This is kind of like how these choose your own adventure uh, games kind of work. At least that's my belief. I don't play too many. But let's go ahead and turn the boat. Caleb pulled the tiller to avoid a collision, steering them towards what he hoped was the main channel. Alaska's inside passage was a labyrinth of islands, and he honestly had no idea where they were. A sudden jolt knocked them both off their feet. The motor screamed in protest as the propeller caught against a boulder beneath the waterline, and the boat lurched to a stop. Alright, so let's see, what do I want to do? I can either back up or I can cut the engine. I suppose I can back up. I mean, hopefully this doesn't destroy the motor, but I don't know for sure. I can't really remember, because the last time I played this in my own spare time, I broke the motor, unfortunately. But yeah, let's see. Caleb reversed the throttle and was met with the deafening sound of metal tearing through fiberglass. Never mind. The engine emitted a puff of black smoke and seized up, plunging them into an eerie silence. The boat bobbed awkwardly as the back remained hung up on the rocks. Listen, Sasha told him. It took a moment for Caleb to realize what she was hearing. The distinct sound of waves crashing against rocks. 
was coming from all around them. Okay, so I made the exact same mistake that I made during my personal playthrough quite a while ago, when I wasn't recording, technically speaking. So yeah, I just destroyed the motor. And technically speaking, from what I've read online, supposedly you can save your motor, but I don't know how to go ahead and do that, because your actions will affect, like, not only the ending, but also the story later on. So I could potentially have saved my motor, actually, technically speaking. So let's go ahead and continue, since we don't really have much of a choice. A large swell washed under them, lifting the boat as it passed. It wasn't enough to dislodge them. Boat came down hard with a hollow crunch that surely cracked the fiberglass hull. Another flash of lightning revealed an approaching wave at least twice as large, and cresting just off their bow. Okay, so we have to either push off or ride it out. I feel like if we ride it out, we are more than likely going to capsize. And if we push, well, actually, I think we might capsize regardless. I don't know, this is a tough decision. I don't actually remember what my decision was last time, to be completely honest. Um, I mean, I suppose I could ride it out and hopefully I can make it to shore, but then again, through the previous scenes we saw, there are a ton of rocks, so we may crash into one of those as well. I'm trying to remember the steps that I took in my last, like, personal playthrough, but I can't fully remember what those were. You know, I'll write it out. Hopefully I'll dodge all the remainders of the rocks and land on shore. I doubt it, but we'll see. They braced themselves as the wave hit. Sasha fared as well as could be expected in the front of the boat, but Caleb took the brunt of it. The sheer force of the wave slammed him against the wall before washing him over the railing. Ooh. I was afraid that was going to end up happening. I was afraid one of them was going to... Knock off. Well, technically speaking, I said that the boat would capsize, and technically speaking, that didn't happen. But, at the very least, someone got knocked off, which is part of capsizing, I guess. Take it how you will. This is still not a good situation, I'm gonna say that much. So let's continue on. Any pain that Caleb felt paled in comparison to the sudden immersion in icy water. Yeah. By Alaskan standards, 57 degrees was actually quite warm but still enough to send an unaccustomed body into shock. Caleb's head rang as he came up, gasping for air. He had just enough mental faculty left to see that the wave had carried him 20 yards from the boat, which was now bobbing freely but half submerged. The rocky shore was at least five times further, but it was in the direction of the current. Ooh. Okay. This is definitely a bad situation. I mean... They got knocked into the boat, uh, uh, in the water, I should say. Caleb got knocked into the water, so it's not a good situation regardless. But at least he seems to be fine. I mean, he's gonna be freezing in the water, I will say that much, but... who? A tough decision. I think the last time I did this, I swam for the boat. But I don't think that actually ended up working. At least not as well as I would have hoped it would. A swim for shore? Caleb forced his trembling limbs in the direction of the shore. But as he got close, he could tell that the waves crashing against the rocks were much larger and more violent than he had thought. How? He felt himself dropping down and touched bottom. But the bigger the trough, the bigger the swell. He turned just in time to see the wave come down on top of him, slamming him underwater, and everything went black. Oh, not good. Not good at all. All right, I made a bad decision here. Definitely made a bad decision. Back in the boat, Sasha managed to regain her balance on the slippery deck, which was now half submerged as the boat sank. She tied off a line and threw it in Caleb's direction, but it wasn't nearly long enough, and Sasha could see that Caleb wasn't moving. Yeah, Caleb's definitely in a bad position. All right, save the boat, and... Caleb's gonna be in big trouble, or save Caleb, or the, and the boat's gonna sink. Ooh. I have to save Caleb. I realize that the water's gonna be cold in this situation, but if we can save Caleb, that's a better decision. The more people alive, the better. Without hesitation, Sasha dove into the water. It was just as cold, but the adrenaline and the conscious decision to jump in helped soften the effects that Caleb had experienced. As the waves helped carry her towards him, 
She felt a sinking feeling in her gut as she saw that Caleb was indeed unconscious. She grabbed him by the life jacket and held on for dear life as a wave came down on top of them. I knew he was unconscious, unfortunately, because it said it's everything faded to black on Caleb's end, but it was definitely bad. But now she's swimming for shore with Caleb. So, who? I hope this works. I mean, Caleb was in a... I don't know if Caleb was actually in a better or worse situation. I mean, technically he did get knocked off the boat and Sasha chose to get out of the boat. But still, I don't know who's in the worst position. Sasha tumbled over the seabed, but somehow managed to keep hold of Caleb. Good. When she came up, it was shallow enough to stand. She realized that they were on a sandbar, 50 yards from the rocky shoreline. There was no way to get there through the gauntlet of waves. But even if she could, the rocks offered no protection from the onslaught of the surf. She dragged Caleb to the closest sea stack, and with her last ounce of strength, hoisted him up to a ledge on the leeward side of the rock. Ooh, all right. Well, I mean, at least she was able to get him, which is nice. I will say that much, but... It's definitely a bad situation. I mean... I can't deny, like, the whole thing is a bad situation to begin with. The, I mean, if I were to deny it, I'd be completely lying. But... I mean, she was able to get him. I mean, hopefully Caleb's gonna be okay. I mean, I think I remember Caleb at least being somewhat okay during the personal playthrough that I did through, but because that this is, like, decision-based... There could be a chance that Caleb may not make it, which is definitely a sad thing to say, but then again, this is decision based. I mean, anything can happen depending on what I choose, so let's continue on. Caleb's skin was cold, but she could feel a pulse in the shallow breathing. Sasha pulled her jacket over them both and tried to find a comfortable spot on the sharp rocks. Exhaustion took hold, and she drifted into a restless sleep. Ooh. All right. Okay, going to sleep while you're cold, not a good thing. You will you will die. You will definitely die if that ends up happening. But in Caleb's case, he's unconscious and cold, which he doesn't have much of a choice. He's technically sleeping, but not by choice. Oh man, I really hope the decisions that I've made have not ended up killing him. That would be bad. All right, so let's see. Um, can I please go to the next page? And oh, oh, I'm apparently done with um this first chapter. Okay. Um, you know what? Actually, not bad, all things considered. I mean, I'm actually gonna go ahead and end things off on this note. And if you guys want me to continue on to chapter two, let me know in the comments. But regardless, this is definitely becoming fairly interesting we've got well i keep saying this over and over but i'm gonna say this one more time it's a bad situation to begin with but i feel like the decisions i may have potentially made might have potentially killed caleb i'm not 100 sure i really hope that's not the case but i'm not 100 sure but yeah this is definitely taking a really big toll on Obviously the whole story and the fact that I destroyed the mower that's definitely not a good thing. I'm gonna be in a lot bigger trouble in that regard. But yeah, this is where like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and end things off. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed. If you did, make sure that like button. But more than make sure that subscribe for future content. Also you can follow me on Twitter at agencyp 0 to stay updated. This has been Zero Studios. Thank you guys for watching, and with that, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>